Hi, Mark Locks, Extension Weed Scientist with the Ohio State University. I'm standing in front of uh, some of our mare's tail research plots. In this situation, we came in to try to investigate the effectiveness of various herbicides on big mare's tail that had survived uh, an earlier herbicide treatment. And we have found out through the course of doing this that this mare's tail population is resistant to both glyphosate and ALS inhibitors like first rate and classic. So we have those in the trial here, but we're also testing a number of alternatives, Ignite, Sharpen, Gramoxone, uh, various products and mixes to see if we can consistently control a population that's as problematic. So I'll show you various plots here that uh, are some traditional treatments that typically have worked on mare's tail that maybe on mare's tail this size or this type of resistance aren't working very well. And some newer combinations we're trying, trying to get rates low enough to still get effective control. Um, but still have cost-effective treatment. So I'll show you several different approaches that we're trying here. First of all, uh, as you saw the camera pan around, you saw that there's quite a bit of mare's tail in this strip, and this was a strip that was missed early with Canopy 2,4-D. In the rest of the field, that treatment generally worked pretty well to burn down what was there. Um, but then, of course, in the rest of the field, because there was ALS resistance, there were eventually some plants that came through that canopy. Um, however, what happened in this strip, it, it was missed early, and then a few weeks later, when they realized it was missed, they sprayed a just a standard rate of glyphosate, which did almost nothing to the population uh, visually, although the plants sort of squatted down and, and branched out a little bit, and the whole whole thing just sort of made them tougher to control. And you get an idea of that from the plots that we're looking at here. Um, the plot right behind me is actually three pounds of glyphosate acid, or 88 ounces of something like Weathermax, um, or like 128 ounces of, of a generic glyphosate. You can see it's not doing very much to this population at this point. You can see a few of these plants you can see what their reaction was to the, the branching that happened after the first glyphosate application. Now this little bit of yellowing is, is in uh, response to what we applied two weeks ago, but the early May application uh, caused the, the plants to sort of die back and then do this branching, which made it more tough to control. And you can obviously see in a population like this, it is glyphosate resistant, we know at this point. So, you know, whether four pounds or, or three pounds of glyphosate acid would have controlled this in early May is kind of doubtful. At this point, the, the plants have been through a couple of sprays, so it's not doing much. Um, right next to it is uh, two pounds or a pound and a half of glyphosate acid, and you can see it's uh, it's really all about the same. Right next to this, which is kind of interesting, I mean, we, we recommend the glyphosate 2,4-D early season as a standard burn down treatment, and it tends to work pretty well. Um, the exceptions are if you get into very large plants, we are all starting to find some mare's tail populations that have resistance to 2,4-D, so it obviously wouldn't work there, but early season it, it probably would have worked here based on the rest of the field. You can see at this point, um, glyphosate 2,4-D, and that's two pounds of glyphosate with a pint of 2,4-D, or half a pound of 2,4-D, um, is essentially not working there. You can see, you know, a lot of those plants may not regrow, but another number of them probably will, so in this situation that's not a, a good enough recommendation. The two plots that are side by side here our glyphosate plus sharpen, which has become somewhat of a standard recommendation where someone doesn't want to use 2,4-D because they can't wait to plant soybeans, and right next to it, Ignite Sharpen. And our history with Ignite Sharpen on our research farm with glyphosate-resistant mare's tails, those are two per herbicides that tend to work very well together. So one of the purposes of this study was to see how low a rate of Ignite we could go and still get control when combined with Sharpen. The plot on the left here is the glyphosate Sharpen. And this is about two weeks after application, so you can see, you know, we give it a 90-95% control. Um, plants appear to be dead, although there's still some green stems there, and we won't really know until we come back a couple weeks later to see if they, if they regrow. But obviously that's two pounds of glyphosate, or a pound and a half of glyphosate with an ounce of Sharpen. It looked good in this situation. Well, the plot next to it is 32 ounces of Ignite with an ounce of Sharpen, which has um, some plants that obviously survived, uh, especially the larger ones. Um, we also have this um, in other parts of the study where uh, the plants were slightly smaller um, and Ignite Sharpen tended to work a lot better, and I'll show those to you next. Okay, the plot I'm standing in next to right now is uh, Ignite at 16 ounces with an ounce of Sharpen, which would be probably about a, uh, with methylated seed oil, about a $12 or $13 treatment. And you can see in this situation where we tended to have mare's tail a little bit smaller, not as many as the big branched ones that survived the first glyphosate application, um, this did very well. And so, uh, you know, we're kind of hopeful that early in the season, if we get into some 2,4-D resistance issues, we'll be able to prescribe um, either glyphosate sharpen, which tends to work um, fairly well so far, or ignite sharpen and have something that's fairly cost competitive still. So that's one of the goals here, not only to see um, how well we control a tough population that survived an earlier herbicide treatment, but generally what our most consistent burn down uh, treatments are. And our assumption is if we have something that works this well in this tough a population that, you know, anytime in 
from about mid-April to mid-May in a population that has not been previously treated, then a number of these will work pretty well. And so uh, we have the study out at several different sites to try to determine that.